I'm behind my schedule. So Windows is the soul of the house. And the second one is the most important from this part. Restore it and make all effort to keep it. And that means all costs should be put in to save an old window. If you must do something to save energy, you could put a modern LE glass. There is one version with 3 mm glass, and if you look on this side, it is green. All glass, the thicker it is, the green light. Uh, LE glass is some metal, little metal on it. It's 10 oxide. And what happens is that when the sun, which is a wave and also a particle, particles go through, it comes here and goes through the glass, go into the room, and on the room it starts to be another amplitude on the heat. And when that heat comes to this window and this metal fence, because it's a metal fence but we can't see it, it will, like a ball, bumps back into the house. So it will reflect the heat into the room. Oh yeah, it will. But some craftsmen have managed to turn it the wrong way. And that will suck the air and the heat out, not the air, but the heat from the, from the inside out instead. <laughs> it's fantastic. One little tiny part of knowledge. Please stand around. And one more thing is use only linseed paint oil. Because linseed paint oil is very little in the molecular structure, it will go into the wood, and since the wood on all the houses are seen in uh, Tarto is uh, needing to be uh, greased up again. So there's a special metal to do this, but I can't tell you all about it. I've got a few slides about it. But there's a shop here in Tarto. They know a lot about those things. And one of the owners here. So ask her for more details later in her shop. As I told you, I told you so many times, I don't have to tell this again. Wow. Now, this is the graduate day. So, did you notice what I told you in the beginning? That we do know when something is beautiful. We know it by heart. And that's why I wanted to show this picture more than once. Because when you look at glimpse on this one, you actually, oh, that's a beautiful house. And it stays quite long that it's a beautiful house. Because you've got the branches, and then suddenly if you start to realize and look at it, there's something wrong, and that's on the bottom level. The window has changed. The proportion is different. But still, when we look, we look like outside quickly and stop. We will look like this. The branch go up, we look here, and then we go up to the window here, and we will stay up here, and the, the view of your mind will stay here. And then you won't notice this. That's why you still think this is a beautiful house. But it could have been even better if they hadn't changed the windows in the bottom on the first floor. So instinctively we know when something is beautiful. And that's why I've chosen this one, because you will not notice it immediately. When you, once you've got the language for the houses, one you know to read it, when you leave this lesson, you will know and you go out and read all the houses in Tartu. And you will know why you should preserve it. Because they are beautiful, because you all know it by instinct. And because the proportion order, the proportion are from the Greek Thai society, they want everything to be a good feeling. And that's why they built the temples the way they did. And also the temple, the whole part of the statue was always at east. And that's why in our churches, in the, our churches, we got the altar at east as well. The sun raises at east as well. Yeah, no, no strange. Egypt as well. Well, that's a lot of things. I can't go into the history. I think Andrew's going to do that. He's very skilled. I had a nine-hour guided tour yesterday. I have never had such a good guided tour in any country before. And he asked, he could answer every question. I'm so impressed. I, this is the best visit ever abroad. OK, a little, little mistake on this one. And that mistake I have seen all over in Tartu. Somewhere, sometimes someone, when the metal started to be very cheap, when we built our houses on the 16th and 17th, we couldn't afford metal because we had to go to blacksmith, and it was very expensive. So we did other metals. We used wood, and we would have used the way the wood was growing, the growth ring, we cut it different, we got a different purpose with the, with the wood. And that wood underneath here is very special cut to restrain water. And 
somehow, by the change when I made this window spiller, they put this metal here, all the way in here. Metal. It will very fast be hot and it will very fast be cold. There will be condensation on the knee. So on the knee here is a cold night and it starts to raise the sun in the springtime or in the autumn. It will be cold and on the heat with cold, there will be condensation, a lot of water. And it will lay there. And within 10 years' time, 15 years' time, if this one is close to, if there's a little distance, it will work. It will start to be mold and it will start to rot. And when it starts to rot, if it's a gleep here, and it will start to run in water on the facade. And actually, you can see it has happened. Usually this, this is extra. I usually don't tell you. You can see already here and there. It's leaking because of this, down here, underneath the timber, and then the facade gets wet, and the paint falls off. Ah, that was the extra. And I'm behind the schedule. Oh yeah, more of the same team. Changed on top and not on the bottom. You will also see the white light on the bottom and you will see the flat reflection on the top. And you actually can see when you look at the sky that it is green and there's no charm, there's nothing in it because the handmade glass would be like a diamond. It will spread the light everywhere, up, down, into the room and it would be a different it would not be like a beaming coming to you. It would be spreading the ceiling on the floor everywhere. And we do know this by instinct. But if you haven't got the words for it, you can't name it. Now you got the name. Wow. And worse is that this was done 10 years ago and already it started to wear out. The scratches. And that was suck water and this aluminium. Therefore, this one usually rots, so we put a metal sheeting here to protect the water from the outside to come, while it's not the outside water making this one rot. It's completely different things doing it. It's water from the inside condensation on the, on the frame, and it will make the frame, wood frame, expand, and it will then let in water from the outside. But it's, everything I told you about is done wrong in this house. The, but you still think that this is beautiful for house because the foundation is still on the bottom. And the only thing that have not changed is the granite foundation, these ones. And you see these ones. And that's why you got the first impression, oh yeah. And you look up and call this yeah. You, you start to, oh, yeah, it's interesting, this is original as well. And you start to look around this and yeah, mm, not too bad, now I tell you. Additional isolation, so it's nearly, nearly filled out, the gap. So it's about this, that have not take two decimeters, that take a little bit. And then they change the wood, so the wood is just the same size, and on the knee is the same distance, that is not in old houses, because the planks are different, and you use the different planks. And once again, it would be the facade showing. In this case, you will see the nails, because the carpenter, he will do the nails the right. Because when you've got isolation, you've got a beam behind and you nail it there. So your eyes on an isolated house will just look at all the nails through. And that you won't see the color. You will not see the raising of the house. You will not see the windows. You will not see the beauty of it because the proportion has been changed. But this one is changed in a way where you have to be skilled to read them. And somehow the person in the house, he like maybe Gothic church, he changed the windows to something which had never been in this type of houses. And you know what the worst part of this was? I had a lecture and I had this picture and I had only this house and the whole lecture was about this house and the owner was in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what he told me? You are incorrect when I told the audience there is no original houses, uh, windows in this house. He said, well, you're not correct. This is my house. There is one, but you can't see it because it's built in. And this is from 60s, panorama windows. And this is, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Something like that, isn't it? It's not changed because of energy changing. They've done other structures. And the windows, they were still last another hundred years. This was a 1920s type house, 
and the windows is still intact. You just need to maintain them. You have to have the knowledge how to maintain them. So there's five things to remember if you do it. Right knowledge. <coughs> and preferably this should be in one person. You should have the right craftsman, you should have the right method, right product, and right timing. And right timing is very difficult. Because what is right timing? Well, right time actually is in Tarto, where all the houses is about paint. Well, yeah, that's good timing. Because if you feel like, oh, this is terrible, it looks terrible, and you go on these houses and put paint on the windows, and you use wrong paint, the frame and the windows will rot much faster. You can still leave them in the shape they are, and they will still be able to be restored. But when once you've done this linseed method, the timing is compared to that you put one paint on, and it's to impregnate linseed into the structure of the wood. And then you've got another recipe to make the middle paint. And then you've got a third paint, and that is to be sacrificed to nature, that the wind and weather should tear it down. And when that layer is, is out of use, it's gone. That is the timing. Then you just need to go out and wash it with some uh, easily soap. Uh, washing up powder is very good. Yes, washing up powder is what we use. And then you just put one layer on it. And then you have another five to 10 years on this window, and it would not happen. So the timing and the knowledge is very important. Otherwise, there will be cost. And a window in that construction with the growth rings and that would last for 200 years without a problem. If you maintain this and you look at some, every year you have a maintenance schedule on some, and it'll be done within five minutes. You just go out, look on the window frame, is there a gap? You put in linseed putty. So just remember, it has to be right, 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 right? <laughs> okay, so why do we do this? Well, there is a advertising. But it's been very difficult to look through. Sometimes you have to be a building constructor, a building engineer to, to know what they're telling you. They're telling you a lot of numbers. And this brochure is often referred to that windows do leak 35% of the heat. And people believe it. Well, if you've got a brochure like that, people do like this, they open it up and start read. Don't do that. If you've got a brochure, turn around, look on the back side. Who had done this brochure? Well, in this case, it is the industry of the glass who had made this brochure. But they had been found in from one of the Swedish government branches for energy saving, in the in the Hedden. And that makes it a different perspective, doesn't it? A lot of true things is told in this, but the conclusion is always because if you don't read it and understand it, you make the wrong conclusion. So I'll tell you a bit fast about it. Look at this one. OK. You need an exercise, don't we? So I ask you, how many of you did see 35%? Raise your hand. Nobody. One. Come on. How many did you see 35%? Okay, we try it again then. How many did see 35%? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're tired now, aren't you? Okay, I'll let you watch a little longer, and I'm going to ask you another question. Everybody started looking, ah, that's why I did it, I like that. <laughs> so now I'm going to ask you, how many of you did see 40%? Oh, I'm proud of you. Did you see 40, actually? Good. 40. 4 zero. Did you? Okay. 40%. It's a few people see the 40. Did any of you see 100? 100 energy is what you pay on the bill. And they choose to look on 60% of the energy leaving the house in one perspective. And in just that perspective, it would, leave, it would leak 35%. So if you look at your energy bill, and you think that you're going to save 35% on that energy bill, uh, you are doing the math wrong. Also, nowhere in this brochure that tell you where this house is placed, 
Well, we all know if we go to Spain, it's hot. If we go to the North Pole, it's cold. Sweden has a very <coughs> wide country. South of Sweden is a different temperature. In North of Sweden, it's different, They're colder. So, and I don't tell you how many square meters off the house the windows are. So you cannot trust those num numbers. But on the top, 35%, every people in Sweden knows that the window leaks 35% of energy. And people go and change the windows. And it will cost you about 8,000 euro or more. And you will not save 35% on the energy bill. It's terrible. So I did different. I was so annoyed about this. And if you, yeah. So I went in, I calculated. And I've given you what I'm calculating. It's a house, 100 square meters. There's 12 meters, square meters of windows. And it's placed in Gothenburg, in Gothenburg that is the climate zone two. And I'm calculating on the, on the construction uh, volumes of NR. You have to know that to, to evaluate it. And uh, yeah, you see the numbers. But what I tell you in this one is that hot water, when you make the shower and you make the washing up, is 25% of this house. And the uh, ventilation is 26. But it would change because what sort of calculation you're doing of it. But the most energy leaking is ventilation and hot water, and not the windows. So if you put a little, little different on the hot water tap, not to run as fast, you save a lot of money. And it would not make any change in the house. And that was what the actual law in Sweden was. It was about saving small things and not doing these big things which became common. It was about doing small things, saving a little bit, and not do a lot of things to save a lot. So the law was very good. Also, we listen to our neighbors, because if the neighbor had done something, he got it very right. Welcome. And uh, yeah, the advertiser knows it. So they said, but do your neighbors change the window? So you should be right, do it yourself. Also, as I told you, when a new couple buys a house, well, the first thing they do is changing the windows. And this is terrible. This is terrible. Now I've got to show you what happens. The window frame here, and it cracked on the, on the lime plaster. And I put mineral insulation in here. And the water will come on it. And it will happen things to it. So what I've done is that they, when they take out this one and in, they break in the sheeting. There is a ceiling. This is a tar sheeting. It's just paper with tar on. And it's very common to use in Sweden from the 1880 and forward because it, it stopped the wind into the construction. And it was much faster to build the lumber because you did not have to exit as good because this one could stop the blowing. So this one is actually the new sheeting on this piece of hair. And it should be done like this. It should be nailed into the frame, turned around, nailed, and underneath here is a linsey putty to stop water to enter into it. So once you change the window, that ceiling will be broken. So I'm going to show you fast some window changes. This was changed 63 from its original to some new windows, modern windows. And uh, 30 years later, they were so rotten, so they could not be uh, used anymore. They were completely rotten. Wrong material in the, in the wood, a wrong growth cliff, and a lot of things about that. And you see the ceiling, the seal here. This is where the nail had been to the frame. New windows. And they were actually made exactly as they were done 1880, with the same method. Uh, harvesting the tree in the winter time, cut up, dried for five years, and then the top of the tree was turned down on the bottom because the tree cannot suck water if the top is facing downwards because the construction of the cell structure is that way. And that is what happened in those houses you got. They knew how to use the wood, how to, use how to use it the way so it would not suck water. Because this, the tree sucks it different if it's from the side or from the top or from the bottom. And as you see, there's no nail. There's absolutely no nail. Inside there's a nail, but on the outside there's, a, there's just a peg, a wood peg, to stop water. Because otherwise it would just rot. It would be uh, metal, will expand, and the water will let in. So if you have to put a nail, it has to be you know, inside where it's, uh, the hot side of the window is. 
Well, you see the sheeting and this. This was where the panorama window was taken. We started to restore. And you see this one, where it hasn't been. The sheeting, when it's been broken, there will be like this. I'm going to show you. There. It was rotten. And this is a little <coughs> damage. So this cost a lot of money to, do, to restore with the same material and everything. So this house has saved nothing. It just cost money to do it, and it will cost money to restore it. We do not change the sheeting until the last moment, because we have to put a new tar sheeting on this. We save it to know that this old one is just to put the new one in position. So we know how it should be done. If you take it away too early, you have no guidance for it. And now to a verse example, another house. And if you look on the top, up here. 1999, it was looking like this. The only thing that's been changed is the balcony and these windows. This is a window and a balcony door. And here is the balcony frame from that door put in 1999. And now the story. The owner put in this 99. 2008, she phoned the craftsman, and the craftsman said, uh, she said, it's raining into my house. I got water inside my hall down here. When it rains, I got water inside this door on the inside. So 2008, he arrived, and he looked into it, and he changed a little bit, and he put a lot of silicone, plenty of silicone. And the owner said, well, it's still leaking. Yeah, yeah, but old houses, they can stand a lot. Here, yeah, leak, oh, it doesn't matter. It will, it will dry out. It must have been from, from before. And 2014, she was fed up with him. He was a local craftsman. So she employed uh, another one from Gothenburg arrived. And he said, oh, it's still the balcony door. It's leaking. So they changed the balcony door, and they changed uh, some of the facade up here, and did leave it. Oh yeah, they left it. But they left behind a huge bill. Very, very expensive, okay? Because the craftsmanship in Sweden, uh, um, a carpenter in Sweden will have about 48 euro an hour. That's the cost for employing a carpenter in Sweden. So she came to me, and I'm sitting on the region in Gothenburg, it's a huge region, and my guidance is free because uh, I'm paid from the, from the government to do this uh, guidance. And um, I told her, you should use one of the craftsmen we recommend. And she did. And on this work, Alf came, and he sent me this picture. And uh, as you can see, he's doing the same. He's leaving the old sheeting as long as possible to get it. So he started to construct what I had damaged before to put in the, the new window. So he started with the same material to do this one. And he sent me this picture asking him what, what to do. And I thought, oh, you have to send me more picture. And it's very good with iPhone because I can send the picture all the time. So he, he sent me this one. Oh, and then I got chill bumps. Oh, it's terrible. For an untrained eye, it would have missed it. And I see this. I see it's black mold, I see here, and I see something there. You won't see it. So I show you another picture. There. You see this white? Ooh, ooh. That is something we don't want. I got really, well, it's, it has a special material. When you see things like this, it has to be a bio biological analyze what sort of mold or fungus it is. You should not let it go, ever. This is alarmous. It's, it, is, it is ringing. And uh, Black Mole up there, he changes it. So I told him, finish this roof, uh, this room on the second floor. And afterwards, you have to take off the facade. So you finish it, and you see the isolation, which is uh, cellulose fiber. And new door made after the old one. But a little changes. Yeah, I haven't got time for that. And then he took the facade. And yes, it was what we... Yeah, it was as worse as I thought it was. So, like this. 
You can't see it right here unless you know what you're looking for. But as soon as you take the ax and do a little bit, you can see how rotten it is inside. So then you have to make another, so you don't have to make the worst uh, arrangement to restore this house. It's much easier. So it's just to take away everything. And this became the chainsaw massacre because there's no, this was not paid by the government or anything. Contribution is the household owner, the owner of the house who has paid it himself. So we actually have to make a much uh, more uh, easy construction, not for costing money. So we would not put the lumber like it had been. We would put this construction. And you have to have the lumber. And this, to have this lumber, you have to uh, make people want to produce it. This lumber has to be laying in the wood for six years to dry. Otherwise, you can't use it. It should be chopped down in the right way, and there's a lot of procedure. So I inspire people to take up their pro production, and on the guidance, I tell people what to use, and I learn the craftsmen how to do it. And that's a circle. I sit in the middle, I tell them, and it starts to work. They finish the product to do. It's very easy. You can get it. 1990, we had no products in Sweden. Today, a lot of factories and uh, producer do produce the right level of quality. That is the quality. And this is the simplified method to do it. And we do, you mustn't, you must never let the first wood lump in the bottom be cut off. Because then the house will start to be like Bambi on, on the ice, just falling apart. So it was rotten to the half, and we just carved it out. And we will put some uh, fungus seed on it and do it that way. Yeah. And the windows. We are told they were bad. So Lund University, they did make a test. How was the window? Are they as bad as we are told? Well, they weren't. They took a window like this and they tested it. They took it out from the, from the house and they tested it. And they got the U2.444 watt each square meter in Kelvin. It's a, uh, the only thing I have to know, the lower number, the better the better window is. And the standard number for this window, sort of kind of window, is always three. So in this window, it is better than we are told. And this is what the result became. We are looking at this window, and we are there. And if you took a modern window out here, it will be that number all the way through. So we tried a modern with three layers glasses to see how good are they. So we restored it, we put paint on it, and we put back the glasses, which is the light little glass, 1.7 millimeters usually, with light, and we tried it again. And we came to 207. It's as good as the standard number for a modern glass, which would be two. And this is where we do stop in the cultural reservation. We make an inner frame in wood, because wood has low imprint on the carbon dioxide, and we put this LED glass I sent around for you all to look at, and then we will be on the number, oops, we will be on 1.6, as you see. Nothing done to it. Paint it, straighten it up, no glaps, uh, LED glass instead. And we are much, much more below than a modern glass. So why change it? Also, there's a report telling that the noise in these windows, because you're out of frame or in a frame, is much less than the modern ones. So you won't have much noise from the traffic. And you still have the beauty of experience the light, the right light through it. Old window, nearly as in Tartu, many windows could be like this. Look close at it. This would still stand 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, because all the water coming into it will dry out. In Sweden, we use this machine to take away paint and take away putty, because you can't restore a window without taking out the glass. This is Marcus. He's the inventor's son. If this machine hadn't been invented, we would have a very big problem to, to uh, restore windows. So he came and showed how to be done to you. And see, so you take away the paint as well as you take away the putty. 
there's different school in this. Right? There's another method as well, where you just grab what is loose and you put on, on linseed oil and let it dry three days, and there's, there's different methods. I'm just showing you one of them, okay? Uh, because if you take away the paint, it will take away the culture layers of how the house has been painted. So if it's implied on all houses, you will have a problem to uh, document how has the paint been on the house. So, yeah. A lot of decision to be made, isn't it? And there is the glasses out, and then you can start to put in the linseed oil <coughs> to the windows frame, and it will be greasy again, and you can paint it up with three layers of paint, and it will be like this. A little bit damaged on the frame, and it changed as little as possible. Oh yeah, growth ring is very, very important. This is what a growth ring should be in a window frame. It should be taken in the center. If you have a pine wood, from one meter from the, from the ground up, and from that level to four and a half meter, you can use the wood for windows. But you could just use the center of it. That is what's used for windows. That's why it's so good, because there's so much waste. But in old age, the other planks on the other side were used to other things. There was no waste at all because they knew how this wood did, would turn and how it would seal. Because once it got wet, it would squeeze harder to the other planks. So they had a lot of knowledge about it. And this is when we have the linseed. You put about a half a liter to it, and then you start to heat it up again. And it will start to boil. You believe about 260, 270 degrees. And behind here is completely dry immediately because the viscosity is very low and it goes into the tree. And once it's there, it will harden and will take the uh, oxide from the, from the air and it will expand. So that we let like the bottle which has been sealed, a wine bottle with a cork in. It would not come any water in. Without water, you would not have any rot, any mold, anything. And then we last. Yep, yeah, this is just about the method and it's finished. And you see, in Sweden, we sometimes don't paint those one, we just burn them with linseed oil and they become quite pretty. And you see, this is the original one frame and you can see the growth ring, can't you? That's how it should be. And this top one should never be painted because as I told you, old houses had the tree, top tree down. That means that if you come water in it, it will be evacuated up on the top and there's no paint on the top, it will go out from the construction. It's a chimney of humidity to leave the tree. And finished and beautiful and original and will be another lot of 100 years. And if you want it to stay pretty like that, you maintain it. If you don't, well, in 100 years of time, it will look like when we started. <laughs>